When you get to Alaska and you go out in the wilderness, you're in the food chain. Your senses are more enlightened than any other place in the world. Besides this unsettled country that just came out of the Ice Age, where rocks are falling still and its rivers are never the same when you get into them. But you're in a place where you better pay attention and better understand what's going on and, and how nature works, or you're, you're, you, know, you might regret that. Uh, clean water, great forests, uh, salmon streams, bears, whales, eagles. It couldn't be any better. I get up into the, into the mountains here and it was just like, this is it. This is, this is where I'm gonna spend the rest of my life. I just knew it. it. It's not just one thing, I guess. That's the bottom line. It's everything that's enveloped by here. This is a search for the master guides, those select few who open the wild to others, who seek the remote, the extreme, the never before who treat outdoor sport like a calling, not a pastime. These are the champions of the wilderness. These are the master guides. Dean discovered a great access point to get to this river where we wanted to put on. And the only way to get there was with ATVs. The whole time we were looking up at these beautiful peaks and this nice brush, and Dean's like, oh, Kona smells a moose. And I was just like, where are we? Who are you? What is this? Uh, only in Alaska do you take ATVs to your pudding. Guiding is instructing, and instructing is guiding. And that's what people want, is they want to learn. The white water doesn't look as big and it's not as white like a blue river or a clear river would be. So at any given time, the river can come up a foot to, to six feet. And so it just adds that element of respect and, and a higher level of protocol. There was one point I remember really vividly. It was just myself and Dean, and we'd entered this canyon, just the two of us, and we are just paddling. And the, the river corridor led to this spectacular view of glacial peaks, like only Alaska has. And there's Dean Cummings in, in the foreground, one of my heroes. And I've spent my entire life doing what I love, and actually found a way to share that love with other people. And this show is about just that. We're not meant to be in cities and we're not meant to just be stuck in this material world. We need, we need, we need this nature, we need this part of it. It's, a, it's what makes life fun, it's what makes life interesting. Tuck, what is this thing with the whales and bubble feet? <laughs> really interesting process. So you got six to 15 whales and you watch them, yeah, and they'll locate a school of bait. All the tails start going down together at once. Get below, one whale will blow a circle of bubbles around that school of bait. And that forces the bait into a ball, which is a defensive position for them. And they start going up to the top. The bubbles force them up to the top. The whales are all down below. They're all working together. One whale gets the number one position and they all go up together and they all come out of the water with their mouths wide open. One whale's in the middle, and that whale gets the best feed, and they all take turns to get that position. And this is the only place in the world they do that? They do it all over Southeast Alaska. This is where they do it a lot. What I realized about Alaska is that the only certainty is uncertainty. We saw that today. We've been planning to climb this peak just outside of Valdez. In true Alaskan fashion, the weather moved in, and shut us down on that peak, but of course, Alaska's littered with massive, beautiful peaks. Dean being Dean, jumped in the heli, flew down the valley, and found this insane peak for us to climb, and in true Dean fashion, we didn't even skip a beat. Let's go ahead and mount up now. We'll get our crampons on and get our tools sorted. We'll do the first part without roping up, and then we'll rope up about halfway. Okay. It's gonna get pretty steep in the middle there. So just, I'll just follow you and do what I'm told. Yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's gear up and go have some fun with it. All right. This'll be nice. So we're in the, uh, so this area, Brad, is the, the diamond is the name of the mountain we're on. And this is the North Cirque. The North Face here is pretty amazing. And it's an ominous place. And still you can hear rocks tumbling down from up there. Yeah. 
It's always moving. It's, There's it's always so, some life. It's so young, you know? Everything's just so unsettled here, it feels like. Dean, has, uh, have you ever done this climb? No, I never have. Um, has anyone? Not that I know of. Um, this is a pretty rare, um, pretty remote place. I mean, it would take you just a day just to get up to here from the lowers. So this would be a two, a two day mission and most people aren't willing to take on the, the three bees down below, the bears, bugs, and bushes. I always know about bears is that, even though you've been around them all your life, like myself since I was four years old, there's never any givens about bears. They're always unpredictable. They can always do something that you don't expect to do and you always have to be prepared. It's their home, we're invading. You know, we're not, we're not at the top of the food chain again. So you have to respect that. And the beauty about ice climbing is you hang on your skeleton. Instead of holding on your arms, have smart feet. Like women are great climbers because they're they don't rely on their strength so much. They have great feet. And so get away from the ice a bit and you literally can see your feet. And then you're levering off your tools and onto your toes. So I can to trust those points. ice axes in the ice yeah, to hold. definitely. And then kick my toes in and rest, kind of put my weight back into the ice on my toes. Yeah. There you go, those are good hits. Where you want me? Right, right in front of me, right on my toes. Okay. Yeah, and when you kick into the ice, it's, it's hard to do. It's not always you can lower your heel, depending. But you, the goal is to try to lower your heel and you get all four spikes in. This is insane. I feel like I'm on an asteroid or something. <laughs> we are. <laughs> what a trip. <laughs> we are actually wow. uh, flying through wow. the space of ocean. This is unbelievable. Pretty much. I've never experienced anything like this. Pretty it's like cool. exhilarating and scary and humbling. and <laughs> like a place to be. This is wild, what eh? What a place. One of the craziest experiences I've ever yeah. had. <laughs> nice. What a trip. Like you're in the moment and your senses are just so much more enlightened than anywhere else that I've ever been in the world. You know, the neat thing about being a guide is you get to experience it again through other people's eyes, and that's what always keeps it fresh. I wanted nothing more than to really create something here and share it with others.